Hello, and welcome back. So, we're still talking about turning my little portable thing here into a Raspberry Pi handheld emulator system. So, made a little bit of progress um, since the last time I recorded a video. Actually meant to do this last weekend, meant to record this update last weekend, but uh, didn't get around to it. Never mind. So, I think last time what I said was that one of the first things that's going to... One of the first things I need to figure out, which is kind of going to dictate... Um, how the rest of the project goes is what I'm going to do about the screen. So the screen that's already in this I'm not going to be able to reuse because I'm not going to be able to find a compatible driver for it and if I do the chances are that's going to add too much bulk. So one of the things I did think about doing last time, let's just put this on the side over out the way, was getting some kind of screen which attaches directly to the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins. So obviously this one is unpopulated at the moment, that's how the zero comes. So company you've probably heard of this company obviously adafruit just sell just such a module so this is a 2.8 inch tft screen and unlike most it uses gpio pins this one's actually got the original layout for the original raspberry pi which is right up here so the original pi had 26 pins and when they started coming out with the b plus and a plus models they changed that to 40 but it doesn't matter you can still use it so one of the things I wish I had learned about this device before I went off and bought it and started playing and started doing all sorts of prototyping and mucking around was that this device is the it's slightly different it's what they call a, a dumb frame buffer basically which just means that you just dump images out to it you don't get it doesn't go anywhere near the video processing of the Raspberry Pi so let me uh, get the A I've been using uh, the A plus I've been using to test this so ordinarily the GPU in the Raspberry Pi does all sorts of um, nice fancy acceleration um uh, nice fancy 3d acceleration which really helps with a lot of the emulator systems that have been compiled for it because obviously it doesn't really have that much raw cpu power unfortunately however by default this doesn't use any of the um acceleration capabilities any of the hardware acceleration that the raspberry pi models offer you so this doesn't offer any of the hardware acceleration features that you would get ordinarily unfortunately unless you muck about with this and hopefully I will dig out the links and be able to put the links into the description down below to show you how to do this so it works it's taken a little bit of software mucking about in order to get it to work but eventually I did get it to work and I could have saved myself a lot of hassle if I'd done a little bit of research beforehand on this but never mind what um, I found the solution I found is um, Oh, I can't remember what it's called now, but uh, you'll be able to see it in the description. But basically what it does is it fools the Raspberry Pi into thinking that a HDMI display is still connected. So you still get all of the uh, hardware acceleration features that you would get from the GPU built in. But what it does is it just takes that raw frame that's being rendered out to the HDMI and dumps it out to a frame buffer device. This thing. So let's kind of get to the point so I had a lot of um, I had a lot of suggestions in my co in the comments last time about what to do about audio and thanks very much for everybody who did uh, who did suggest um, an option there I'm still not sure about what I'm gonna do but hopefully I will be able to demonstrate some of the problems with the onboard audio anyway so let's just demo this thing up and running and get this working so plug that in on here although it doesn't occupy the full header it doesn't make much difference you can still use it I'm uh, just going to plug in my USB hub over here so I can actually control it and I've also a tiny little network dongle plugged in here as well just for testing purposes and uh, we'll get this thing up and running. Now where's my power? Power? Need power. Here we go. And let's get this thing booted up. Hopefully am I going to be able to get this into a position where you can see it? Yes I am. Maybe. We'll see. Here we go. Oh, try not to reflect the light, dumbass. Yeah, uh, this is going to be a little bit awkward. Uh, have I got anything I can prop this up with? Hmm. What about the mouse? Let's wedge the mouse in behind there. I don't need that for the moment. Now I said I want to avoid reflecting the light. There we go. Hopefully that'll work. Still booting. 
Fuck. Oh, damn it. My camera really isn't liking this, is it? It does take a little while to boot. Not a lot I can do about that. Any time now. Oh dear, you really can't see much on that screen at all, can you? What if we bring it up close? No, you still can't see shit. Well, hopefully you'll be able to see when I fire up a game anyway, so... Oh, this is really awkward. I really need some better cameras. So what I'm going to do, you probably can't see this very well on here, I'm going to fire up an emulator called Final Burn Alpha. This is an emulator for the Neo Geo system, and this one's done really well. It's uh, it, it, it's practically perfect emulation. Uh, oh, that was me bashing my microphone, excuse me. So, let's have a look through what we've got on here. Uh, that one will do. That's quite mental. Let's have a look at that. Anytime. Anytime. Thank you. Now you probably can't see this too well, unfortunately, but this is running in full frames with no slow down whatsoever. Obviously the pictures are um, a little bit strange but that's just because of the game that we're using here so are we going to be able to get this to a point where you can see it? No we're not. Never mind. Well trust me it does work perfectly. This isn't the screen, this isn't the screen quality or anything like that and this is just my shitty camera not being able to pick it up properly. I can assure you that it does work properly. In any case that works, that works just fine. Now, I mentioned audio earlier on, and I still think I'm going to have a little bit of an issue with audio, so I think what the most promising thing to do with audio at the moment, let me just uh, continue that in a second, I think the most promising thing to do with audio at the moment is to find a cheap USB um, sound card and just rip it apart, something really small, something really tiny, and just rip it to pieces and use that as my audio output. So, the simplest thing to do would be to use the Raspberry Pi's built-in audio circuitry. So I'm going to get my... Uh, can I pause that? No, I can't. I get my B plus over here to demonstrate. My old B, rather. So I said last time, all of the Raspberry Pi's have analog audio out. And the way they do that is by using... It's what, it's what they call PWM audio. It's not a true digital-to-audio, digital-analog converter, what they do is they generate it using pulse wave modulation signals coming out of the, the main processor. So the problem with this, and this would be by far the easiest solution because it requires barely any components whatsoever. Um, I just, you just built in a simple, you just build a simple filter circuit, um, tap off a couple of the GPIO pins and Robert's your father's brother. Problem with that, however, is that the Raspberry Pi inbuilt analog audio is re renowned for being incredibly poor quality. Let's see if we can demonstrate it here. In fact, it's even lagging slightly, isn't it? So, yeah, it's not great at all. Let me just um. I'll tell you what, I'll quit that. I'll mute my microphone uh, so you can hear it better. Let's see. Go. 
that's enough of that. Hopefully, let me just uh, unplug this. This might just make a noise. Sorry. There we go. I have to edit that out. So, that is going to be the simplest solution. Let's just reuse the Raspberry Pi's onboard audio. However, the quality of that is absolutely atrocious. It is not very good at all. So, what I will do, I'll experiment. I think the next thing now is to get some small USB sound cards and I can try and hopefully rip them apart, see what makes them tick. Um, I think that's going to be better quality overall. I do have um, a USB sound card on my main PC, which I can test with. However, I'm using it to record at the moment, so I can't use it to demonstrate. So that, I think, is the next thing I need to solve. Once I've done that, I think the one thing I really need to concentrate on then is battery power. And to do that, I think I really need to hook up the Raspberry Pi Zero. So at the moment, I'm using an A. Uh, an A plus to test all this because they're pretty much the same thing but I think I really need to get this screen hooked up to the zero plug in all the USB peripherals I'm going to need start testing the power uh, see how much uh, see what kind of battery capability I'm going to need so I will probably use well I will obviously use lithium polymer uh, lipo cells to do this um, I've spotted a module from again from Adafruit or Adafruit whatever you want to call them um, which does not only USB charging but it also does um, 5 volt regulation as well apparently it's up to 90-95% efficient regulator so that should be quite good good thing with this thing is that its power draw is ridiculously tiny it's 160 milliamps just for the board which is which is pathetic and this screen apparently only draws up to 100 milliamps so hopefully you're talking less than 3 to 350 milliamps for the entire system that would be fantastic but we'll have to see i think okay so like i said thanks for all the comments and thanks for all the suggestions on the previous video um i think i'm still not sure what to do about sound at the moment as you heard there it's it's quite rough it's quite ropey um so i think a usb sound card is probably going to be the best option let me just um shut this down a moment because i think i need to i think there may be one fundamental one more fundamental thing i need to oh bum i've done that wrong i think there's one more fundamental thing i need to do uh, let's just shut this down here uh, Off you go. There we go. I think there's a slightly more fundamental thing I'm going to need to check and test here. So let's just uh, take all this apart. There we go. So this screen obviously has to fit inside the case for this thing. So. I have a feeling that there is going to be a slight amount of overhang with this PCB at the bottom and I think it's going to need some creative positioning so I think that may very well be my next thing it may even be my next video actually is let's take this thing apart and see how well this screen actually fits in here obviously when we get to the final thing I'm gonna desolder all of these pins I'm gonna desolder this additional output connector because this screen doesn't actually need all 26 of these pins it only needs a handful it needs about five or six from memory so I can take these connectors take these both these connectors off flatten it right down that should allow me to mount the zero directly behind it so I'm not sure what the best way of doing it is I could either mount um, let's see let's pretend that my zero here is the screen so I could solder in a row of header pins here and just say mount that directly Am I going to be able to show that one? Maybe if I do it that way, maybe if I stop bashing my microphone. So mount the uh, zero like that, for example, and just solder the thing together, maybe. Or we can just take a short length of um, uh, IDE cable works best for this and just solder from here to here. That might be the best way of doing it because it gives me a little bit more flexibility, but uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. This is going to be a long way off anyway. I'm practically building the thing from scratch. All I'm using this thing for really is its case. So. Okay, anyway, thank you for watching. I'm going to shut up now. And um, hopefully, I'm going to see if I can get my hands on a better camera because this thing is a really is a bag of shit. It really is. So apologies about all my video, my poor video quality, but decent cameras are expensive. Deal with it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you again.